Hi everyone, okay, it's time for another Bobby Fischer game. This time we're going to look at a great game he played at the international tournament in Bled, Slovenia in 1961 when he was just 18 years old. The most instructive element of this game is how to punish your opponent if he doesn't develop his pieces quickly enough. Bobby had the white pieces and was playing against Efim Geller, who was a top-class Soviet grandmaster and contender for the world title on six occasions. Bobby opened with e4 as usual, after which came e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. So, going into the rue Lopez, and after a6, bishop a4, and d6, just going into the Steinitz variation. So, Bobby Castle, then bishop g4, and h3, which is forcing black to choose a diagonal for the bishop. And bishop h5 is what Ghetto played. And there's a little trap here that's worth knowing. An alternative for black is h5. And if white now takes the bishop with h takes g4, after h takes g4, black has the advantage. If knight e1, then queen h4, and it's mate in 4. If white tries to give his king an escape route, say with uh, f4, then simply g3. So it's best, of course, not to capture the bishop in the first place if you see your opponent playing this and you have the white pieces. Better is something like d4. Okay, so anyway, this game went bishop h5, and then c3, which is just making space for the bishop at c2, and it's often the case that the bishop will move there in the Rue Lopez, and it also supports a d4 push later, playing uh, pawn c3. <coughs> Excuse me. So then came queen f6, which is an unusual move. It's not unheard of at top level, but really a knight would be better here on f6, and it's stifling the kingside development. Uh, the only justification is if Geller is planning to exchange his light squared bishop here on h5 for the knight on f3. And Bobby was quick to put a stop to anything along those lines and played g4. And it's interesting, really, that Geller even went into these lines associated with uh, Queen F6 in the Rue Lopez because Bobby was a noted expert in all lines of it, even at this young age. And at the time, he'd done a lot of work on a gambit line of this variation, and that's what he now went into. After Bishop G6, he played D4. And despite his weakened king side here, these pawns having moved up, and the fact that he's now going to lose this pawn on E4, he gets excellent compensation as black is still undeveloped, so vulnerable, especially as his king is still in the centre and the centre files are about to become dangerously open, especially after bishop takes e4, which is basically forced, because uh, in this situation Bobby is threatening bishop g5 and the only square for the queen is e6, and then comes d5, which would win at least uh, the knight on c6. So bishop e4 is basically forced. And then knight b to d2 to defend the knight on f3 because it's now attacked twice with the bishop on e4. And it's interesting to note that this position has only been reached three times at top level and white has won every game. And his position here is very strong with um, black being undeveloped and white's piece is just much more able for attack, despite these king side weaknesses, is not really a problem given the uh, the overall situation. So bishop g6 was played here, because uh, this bishop is attacked now. If instead bishop d3, then bishop takes c6 check, b takes c6, rook e1, black castle's king side, and rook e3 had been played by Smyslov against Medina at the Tel Aviv Olympiad three years later. Sorry, it was played three years later. And in that game, Smyslov got a huge initiative and won in 30 moves. So it's uh, not recommendable. So bishop g6. Then comes bishop takes c6 check and b takes c6, which gives up the bishop pair, but it also ensures that it's not safe for black to castle queenside because of the damaged pawn structure here. And so the king remains in the center, which is the main kind of... Uh, tactical target for white at the moment. Then d takes e5, d takes e5, and knight takes e5. And material is now equal here, and Bobby is exploiting the fact that the king is, in, is uh, still in the center. If the queen captures the knight here, then then uh, she gets pinned. 
sorry, hold on now. Knight takes c5. If queen takes c5, down rook e1 simply. And even after queen takes c1, so getting a rook and a knight for the queen after a queen takes c1, it still favors white very strongly. And uh, another possibility here is castling queen side. But after queen e2, king b7, and knight b3, threatening knight to a5 check is very strong for white. So after knight takes c5, Ghetto played bishop d6. And then came knight takes g6. And Geller thought for half an hour on this move and eventually realized that opening the h file would favor white as opposed to black. So he played queen takes g6 here. Let's just have a quick look at h takes g6. Then knight e4 would favor white after queen e5. Knight takes d6 check. Queen takes d6 and rook e1 check with a bishop against the knight in the end game, which Fisher was especially good at. Plus, black having two lots of doubled pawns here and here, it would be more or less a matter of technique for Bobby to win. So, queen takes g6 is what Geller went for. Then came rook e1 check, and now black is starting to get into serious trouble. He played king f8 here, which was really the best move. If instead knight e7, then knight c4 is strong for white. If black castles queen side to try and get his king safe, then queen a4 gives white a winning advantage because black's queen side is falling apart. Another possibility, instead of king f8, was king d8, but it's also not good. After knight c4, followed up with bishop f4 is again very strong for white. So king f8. Then knight c4 came in the game and h5 which is trying to drum up a bit of counterplay but it's completely blunted after the bishop on d6 comes off the board and c takes d6. And undoubling the pawns here seems logical but it was better to recapture with the queen. After queen takes d6 and then will come queen takes d6, c takes d6, bishop f4 rook d8 if instead to defend that pawn d5 then bishop d6 check simply is winning easily so rook d8 rook a d1 d5 c4 h takes g4 h takes g4 would still favor white to win but not as much so as the game continuation so c takes d6 anyway and then bishop f4 which is a great move because it combines attack with defense as this bishop can come to g3 later to protect the king. And here Geller thought for 40 minutes and played d5, but it was a blunder. The then world champion Mikhail Tal was watching the game and suggested afterwards that rook d8 was probably black's best hope, but analysis showed that even that was not enough after queen e2, h takes g4, h takes g4, Black is basically in Sugswang, defending the mate threats. Best play is for black to be aggressive here with f5. But then comes rook a d1, d5, rook d4, c4, rook a4. And white should win, but it'll probably take a long while to be a long end game and that kind of thing. But anyway, that didn't come in the game. It was d5 was played, and then came queen b3, which is the strongest move with the penetration pending for the white queen that will lead to black's demise and another point of playing bishop f4 b before is so that it stops black taking control of the semi-open b file with this rook which could have stopped play like queen b3 from happening and here Geller thought for another half an hour and played h takes g4 which was another blunder most likely brought on by the pressure his position was under he later revealed that what he was trying to figure out was how to defend his backward pawn on c6 here, but no matter what he did, Bobby had a great move ready. If, for example, knight e7, then rook takes e7, and the rook can't be taken, or it's mate in 7, after queen b7 check, king f6, queen takes c6 check, king e7, and rook e1 check, and mate follows quickly. Now all black can do is sacrifice his queen to delay. For example, queen e6, bishop g5 check, f6, queen takes e6 check, king d8, Queen takes d5 check, king c8, rook e7, rook a7, rook takes a7, f takes g5, and queen e8, mate. <coughs> so h takes g4, anyway, in the game. 
Then comes uh, queen b7, which gives black a check with g takes h3. But after bishop g3, the useful defensive move I mentioned before, rook d8 and queen b4 check, Geller resigned after only 22 moves from white because he has no decent defense to the mate. His king can't move, so he's forced to block with a, ple with a piece. If uh, knight e7, then, uh, oops, hold on. If knight e7, then queen takes e7, check, king g8, queen takes d8, check, king h7, and white wins easily. Uh, another option is rook d6, but then simply queen b8, check, rook d8, and queen takes d8 is mate. So it was another great game from Bobby. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.